Major funding for KPBS Evening Edition has been made possible in part by Anderson Plumbing, Heating and Air, proud to support the mission of KPBS and privileged to serve San Diego clients. Anderson Plumbing, Heating and Air, helping homeowners maintain drain, heating and cooling systems since 1978. And by the Conrad Prebis Foundation, Darlene Marco Shiley, and by the following. by viewers like you. Thank you. Good evening, it's Monday, February 1st. Thanks for joining us, I'm Maya Trabulsi. New data from San Diego County shows that COVID-19 regulations during lockdown led to a decrease in outbreaks and slowed the spread of the virus. KPBS reporter Jacob Ayer says limiting local travel is why it worked. Public health data shows that COVID-19 outbreaks at restaurants and retail spaces fell drastically during the most recent stay-at-home order. UC San Diego professor of epidemiology, Andrea LaCroix, says the steep decrease in outbreaks suggests that people listened to the stay-at-home order and limited trips to local businesses. According to the state data, they, have, they determined that the mobility of people, the movement of people that they track, um, and, you know, using anonymized data from our cell phones um, showed 40% less movement in the community in all places. It's agnostic to which places. Lieutenant Sean Takeuchi of the San Diego Police Department says law enforcement officers followed up on complaints regarding COVID-19 protocols that they received through the office of the mayor, the county, or directly to their department. He stressed that the majority of businesses are in compliance with COVID-19 restrictions. So, you know, every time there's a change in what the public um, has to comply with, what we do as a department is we go out and we make sure that, that people are understanding or they're educated about that, um, about the change in the law and what the requirements are. Um, after education, compliance wasn't sought, then, then we did have enforcement as a tool in the form of um, citations. While many restaurant owners voice their complaints about the most recent lockdown order, LaCroix says the virus will continue to spread without strict stay-at-home orders. That if we would just uh, agree to a three-week stay-at-home order and really stay home for three weeks, including keeping the essential workers at home except for health care and groceries, we could get rid of this pandemic in three weeks. Over the course of the pandemic, San Diego County has identified more than 1,100 community setting outbreaks. They account for a small portion of the county's total COVID-19 numbers at 7,600 cases and 27 deaths. Jacob Ayer, KPBS News. January was America's deadliest month of the pandemic. According to Johns Hopkins University, more than 95,000 people died from COVID-19 last month. Here in San Diego County, 1,027 deaths were reported in January. The number of cases and hospitalizations are trending downward in California, but deaths are still high. We're a little more than halfway through the flu season, and it's been a remarkable one. It's been very mild with sharp declines in cases and in deaths. KPBS reporter Matt Hoffman says health officials are attributing the drop in flu cases to pandemic protection measures. You know, I've been here for boy, 21 years now. I have never seen it this low. Uh, I don't believe I've ever had a year where there was no death uh, by this time. Kaiser San Diego Assistant Medical Director Dr. William Sang says an extremely mild flu season has been a bright spot during a deadly pandemic. We knew the combination of flu and COVID would be a killer. From last July through the middle of January, just 662 confirmed cases of the flu have been reported in San Diego County with no deaths. During this same time last year, there were 10,000 cases and 32 deaths. I've never seen it like this. And Dr. Sang says while initial symptoms are similar, for hospitals, there's no confusing coronavirus cases with flu ones. From the test perspective, there's absolutely no argument. Um, it's completely different. He says at Kaiser San Diego, when patients are having respiratory problems, they're given tests for both the flu and coronavirus. We have seen that 
Even if they're positive for COVID, they're negative for the influenza. The CDC says influenza activity nationwide is unusually low, and health officials say that's because the same measures used to contain coronavirus, staying isolated, wearing masks, and social distancing, will also curb the flu. We're doing this to protect people from COVID, but the side effect of that or the benefit of that is we also drop down any type of a transmissible disease. Dr. Sang says protective measures are extra important right now with a new, more contagious variant of the coronavirus in San Diego. Locally, Kaiser is still working to vaccinate its healthcare workers and senior patients. As soon as we get the supply, we get it in arms and we start with the population that's most at risk. And as soon as we finish that and and have the supply availability, then we move down to the next tiers. With fears of a twindemic, health officials have been pushing for months for everyone six months and over to get their flu vaccination. Matt Hoffman, KPBS News. Congressional Democrats are ready to move forward quickly on President Biden's massive $1.9 trillion COVID relief proposal, even without Republican support. But as Karen Kaifa reports, a group of Senate Republicans has a pitch for the president. President Joe Biden opening the door to a group of Republicans to discuss his COVID relief proposal, but not willing to cede too much. He's happy to hear from them, uh, but he's uh, also feels uh, strongly about the need to make sure the size of the package meets this moment. 10 GOP senators putting forth a $600 billion plan that is significantly smaller than Biden's $1.9 trillion bill. Among the areas the GOP group has targeted, scaling down Biden's proposed income threshold for direct payments. You could have a family with three kids uh, making almost 300,000 bucks a year getting a check. And many of these people have had no impact from COVID. In fact, some are doing quite well, others are struggling. Let's focus on those who are struggling. It's one point Biden appears open to negotiate. But in other areas, Democrats may be less willing to yield, like movement toward a $15 minimum wage, citing the urgency of the moment. If you listen to economists um, across the political spectrum, uh, they say that given the big hit to the economy we saw in the last quarter, uh, it's important to go big here. Senate Democrats could try to pass Biden's bill without any Republican support using a budget and deficit related mechanism called reconciliation that needs a simple majority rather than 60 votes. The White House says that's up to them. He's leaving it up to them, and he believes that there is still room uh, for bipartisan support for this package. In Washington, Karen Kafa, KPBS News. Parents in Poway dropped students off at school for the first time in weeks. Today, Poway Unified moved forward with its plan to reopen elementary schools for in-person learning. The district had planned to return in January, but the surge in cases and staffing shortages forced them to hold off. Our media partners, KGTV, talked with some parents who were happy to have their kids back in the classroom. I, my little boy does not like computers. He barely likes Fortnite, but... Uh, He's really gotten to Zoom this year, and I think that they've got a good program. And um, just seeing him struggle in fourth grade has been really hard. So I really hope that we can keep the schools open and uh, get back to uh, a new set of normal. One of the precautions being taken at schools that are reopening is split morning and afternoon scheduling. Students not wishing to go back can still receive virtual learning. The district is waiting until the county moves into a less restrictive tier before bringing back middle and high schoolers. The supply of vaccines from the state has been an ongoing issue across California and here in San Diego. KPBS health reporter Taryn Mento tells us about the local tool that state officials are looking at when deciding how much of the vaccine to give. The long lines at Peco Park may be frustrating, but a steady stream of idle arms makes for a higher burn rate. That's the window between receiving and administering COVID-19 vaccine doses. UCSD Health CEO Patty Mason says the state wants vaccinators to keep that short. That we're able to administer the vaccine, you know, within um, a week's time from, you know, getting an allocation to in, in arms and then uh, That'll drive further allocation to us as a region. UCSD Health's allocations go to its own patients and healthcare workers, and it administers the county's vaccines at the downtown super site. Mason says the burn rates for both are about six to seven days. But the key to proving that to the state is the San Diego Immunization Registry. So what it is is a computer database of immunizations that have been given to people 
regardless of which healthcare provider gave those immunizations. UCSD's Dr. Mark Sawyer says the San Diego Immunization Registry, or SDIR, launched decades ago and is one of the few that's locally managed in California, which has a statewide registry. So it is a way for healthcare providers and pharmacists and schools to look up whether you're up to date on vaccination and get you caught up if you're not up to date. County officials previously told KPBS SDIR was mostly used for childhood vaccinations, but now it's mandated for all COVID-19 shots. UCSD's Mascent says entering information quickly it is, is crucial. It, it is the visibility that the state has for for what we've talked about, the burn rate. But Mason says burning through vaccines quickly is still a gamble. UCSD is setting up a mass vaccination site on its own campus that would likely serve the public as well as its patients. But she's unsure if or when the 3,000 doses UCSD gets each week will increase. That said, we're never going to get allocation if we don't have the infrastructure to put it in arms. San Diego County set a goal to fully vaccinate 1.8 million residents by July. So far, the county says just over 53,500 500 San Diegans received both doses of a COVID-19 vaccine, but it notes data may be missing because of reporting delays. Taryn Mento, KPBS News. The county also says doses administered by the military or veterans administration in San Diego may not be included in its tally. While the state and county are still working out the next phase of vaccinations, KPBS reporter Max Rivlin Nadler says homeless service providers are making their own plans. San Diego County has ramped up vaccination efforts over the past few weeks, opening up appointments to people 65 and up, and all healthcare workers. Getting an appointment, however, is contingent on following news updates and having access to a phone or computer. For folks who, for whatever reason, have trouble using the internet, have a lot of chaos in their lives um, because, for example, they're experiencing homelessness, uh, getting signing up for and getting to an appointment for a vaccine is is certainly a, a challenging endeavor. Father Joe's Villages, one of the main service providers for the homeless in San Diego, is already laying the groundwork for mass vaccination events to vaccinate people in its shelters and those currently living on the street. The events are going to look like having a mix of appointments for those for whom an appointment does work, but then also walk-in capacity so that people can literally walk up and, and potentially get a, a vaccine and we'll have as much capacity as we're able to for those walk-up uh, uh, vaccines. The vaccines will be paired up with regular food distribution programs, as well as outreach events. But the logistics of storing and administering the vaccine will make this work tricky. Once you stick a needle into the vial to draw out a vaccine, you have to use that entire vial within six hours. And that presents a lot of challenges for setting up a mass vaccination event where you don't know who's going to show up or how many people will show up. It's up to the state to decide when to begin offering vaccinations to the homeless. It recently scrapped a plan to prioritize them in the next phase in favor of doing vaccinations by age. I mean, people experiencing homelessness, whether they're unsheltered on the streets or in a shelter, are certainly at higher risk of COVID-19 than the average uh, population. Father Joe's has already begun fundraising for a COVID-19 vaccination fund that will support the need for more staff and more safety equipment as the organization takes to the streets to make sure some of San Diego's most vulnerable are vaccinated. Max Rivlin Adler, KPBS News. We have more information on vaccines at kpbs.org. You can also find links to make an appointment online if you are eligible. The county's $27 million COVID rent relief program isn't rolling out quite as planned. I News Source investigative reporter Cody Delaney explains. In August, county supervisors were clear. None of the rental assistance should benefit tenants living in cities with money in their own programs. At the time, then Supervisor Diane Jacob said the program was badly needed in her East County district. She asked that priority be given to the 2,000 renters in unincorporated areas who were ready to apply. And I don't know how staff is going to work out priorities, but uh, I want to make sure that, that these folks are taken care of. It didn't work out that way. An iNews source analysis found nearly three quarters of the 11 million spent through the end of last year went to help renters and cities with their own programs. All of this was against the board's stated wishes. 
Nearly half of the money benefited tenants in the city of San Diego, which also had its rent relief effort. For KPBS, I'm iNewsource investigative reporter Cody Dulaney. iNewsource is an independently funded nonprofit partner of KPBS. Black History Month starts today, and the San Diego History Center wants to focus on local African American stories. KPBS arts and culture reporter Beth Accomando previews the center's new online exhibit. There's a saying that a picture is worth a thousand words. San Diego History Center has photos that speak volumes about African Americans in San Diego throughout the decades. Take these portraits from the 1890s, described as woman with a parasol and man with a derby hat. Marketing manager Shelby Gordon says she's been thinking about the people in these photos and what those images can tell us. People think that blacks coming to San Diego early were not subject to segregation and racism, thinking that California was more progressive. That's not necessarily true. So what I see in those photos is perseverance, that in spite of, in view of the fact, you still got a fine man who takes, has enough respect for himself and his reputation and that of his family, that he wears the finest derby hat he can and then pays a photographer to take a picture of him in it. A diverse array of photos make up the bulk of San Diego History Center's new exhibit, Celebrate San Diego, Black History and Heritage. I'm a black San Diegan, so a lot of these are snapshots of my life. Um, I was baptized in a pool like this. I know ladies who lunch in that photograph. They dressed up, they ate outside, they had beautiful tablecloths, and I'm really glad that we have these kinds of photos to remember that. Many of these are from the Norman Baynard photo collection. Mr. Baynard, who was a, a black portrait and events photographer here for decades. His son literally brought us negatives and prints from his collection, which is extensive. A collection housed in the archives at Balboa Park. We are in the research archives. We are below the floor, below the exhibition space. And this is sacred ground. <laughs> there are and newspapers and microfiche and negatives and prints. The Black Archives collection also contains documents and ephemera, ranging from the Spanish colonial census of 1798 to the Black newspaper, The Lighthouse. They talk about things that are still relevant now. Coming out to vote about Central High School, even though that happened in Little Rock, Arkansas, it was a significant milestone in race relations, and that is depicted on the front page of the San Diego Lighthouse. There are also items that have been donated. This is a book from Bethel AME Church, and that's um, African Methodist Episcopalian. This was their commemorative book for their 100th anniversary. And again, for us to be able to have this here is a real feat because that right there is a capsule. That's a time capsule. And then last year, Jackie Thompson, who was an Olympic athlete, actually ran, went to Morris High School, ran with Mickey's Missiles, and she donated her Olympic competitor number to us here at the center. But there are gaps in the black history the center has gathered. And we said then, what a great idea then to go to the community so that they can insert their memories, their reflections, their milestones, their photographs, their art to be inserted into our virtual timeline. A virtual timeline gathering all these materials can be found at the San Diego History Center website where people can look through images that tell amazing stories. Beth Accomando, KPBS News. Local Congresswoman Sarah Jacobs is among those calling for Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene to resign. The Georgia Republican is under fire for past remarks, including suggesting the Parkland and Newtown school shootings were staged. House Democrats want a formal censure and her removed from committee assignments. On Midday Edition, Jacobs said Greene must be held accountable. 
I felt like it was incredibly important that we set down this marker of censure, uh, that this is beyond the realm of normal political disagreements, and this is behavior that is frankly unacceptable. 100 House members have signed on to support a resolution to remove Green from the Education Committee. Republican House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy's office has said he's meeting with Green this week, but there is no indication whether he will take any action. I'm Judy Woodruff. Tonight on the News Hour, the drive to a deal. President Biden pushes to ramp up economic relief to the pandemic. Coming up at 7 after Evening Edition on KPBS. The Diocese of San Diego is mourning the shooting death of one of its teachers. The San Diego Police Department confirmed that Mario Fierro was found dead this morning in a suspected homicide. It happened just after 7 this morning on Kansas Street near Monroe. An investigation is ongoing and so far no arrests. Fierro graduated from Cathedral Catholic in 2002 and returned to teach there in 2016. He also served as the athletic director at Notre Dame Academy. Extra security is being added to campus, which is now closed until Thursday. Grief counseling is also being made available. More than 11,000 pounds of cocaine and 9,000 pounds of marijuana were intercepted in the eastern Pacific Ocean. The Coast Guard, Navy and federal agencies helped seize the drugs worth more than $200 million. The drugs offloaded here in San Diego came from USS Gabriel Giffords and Coast Guard ships. Last April, counter-narcotics operations increased deployment to disrupt the flow of drugs. The TSA is going to start enforcing President Biden's mask mandate for passengers using mass transit at midnight. Pete Montine has the details. Aviation workers have been wanting this for months. They have been the ones responsible for enforcing mask rules laid out by airlines and airports. Now the TSA will start requiring masks here at security, but it says throughout the transportation system, public and commercial, that includes planes, trains, buses, boats, taxis, ride shares, also here in airports and at transportation hubs. All of this goes into effect, 11.59 p.m. Monday night. And passengers who are violating this could face civil penalties. They could also be denied boarding. But the civil penalties are something that's so interesting here. Airlines have really only had recourse by banning people from flying again. Delta says it's banned about 900 people from its flights alone for refusing to follow its mass policy. Politics is really driving the policy here. The Biden administration is putting this mandate in place after the Trump administration failed to act. Pete Montine, CNN, Reagan National Airport. Under the new mandate, the mask needs to have at least two or more layers and fit snugly. That also applies to gaiters. Scarves and bandanas do not meet the new standard. San Diego can rejoice as one of its most important tourist attractions is open again. The Midway Museum, which showcases naval aviation history, usually gets more than a million visitors per year. Well, 2020 saw less than half that number with only 350,000 guests. For now, only outdoor areas like the flight deck are open for tours, which have to be reserved online. Yeah, I think a lot of people are really anxious to get out of the house and, and go out and do things, but they want to do things that are safe. And Midway uh, really, really presents itself as a safe experience for everybody in San Diego. Midway Museum volunteers, many of them retired military members in their 70s, have amped up the cleaning of high-touch areas. And some more good news, many of them have already had at least their first vaccination. Well, we've seen a few sprinkles in the area during the day today, but uh, tonight drying out. It'll be dry on Tuesday. Next chance for some showers on Wednesday, mainly up in the mountains. Does not look like it's going to be much of a storm for us. And uh, with that system moving through, it'll be cooler. And then for the end of the week, uh, dry weather and temperatures starting to rise once again. So as we take a look at our weather tonight, just a few clouds around. Uh, Oceanside 46, uh, San Diego's at 52, Brago Springs 51, Mount Laguna at 44, the Ramona cooling down to 39 degrees. Now during the day on Tuesday, we'll be dry here. The next system starts to drop down to the coast and that'll bring wet conditions to central and northern California, but southern California stays dry. We'll be looking at sunshine mixed with clouds in Oceanside and San Diego 
mid-60s. Ramona's in the mid-60s and El Cajon's in the upper 60s. Abrego Springs, uh, nice, look at that, 79, and Mount Laguna at 49. During the day Wednesday, now that system swings through our area. Uh, just some spotty showers in the mountains, uh, this the moisture is well to the north and well to the west out to see the systems kind of sp systems splitting in two. Yeah, we're not in a good spot. Temperatures, well, turning cooler on Wednesday, but then sunshine and nice for the end of the week. Inland sections, well, the clouds will be with us and the temperature is gradually rising. End of the week, we'll be back in the 70s. And as we head our way to the mountains, a rather breezy Wednesday, maybe a few sprinkles there. And look at how it gets cooler into a Thursday and then milder for the end of the week. And in the deserts, uh, pretty nice uh, and mild next couple of days. And then temperatures cool off later in the week and pleasant for the weekend. And for KBBS News, I'm meteorologist Mark Mancuso. San Diego's own Fernando Tatis Jr. is the cover star of baseball's marquee video game. This morning, MLB The Show revealed the cover for this year's version. The game comes out in April, and this year it will be available for Xbox systems for the very first time. MLB The Show is played around the world, but it's produced right here in San Diego at Sony's studios in Sorrento Valley. You can find tonight's stories on our website, kpbs.org slash evening edition. Thanks for joining us. I'm Maya Trabulsi. Have a great evening. Major funding for KPBS Evening Edition has been made possible in part by Anderson Plumbing, Heating and Air, proud to support the mission of KPBS and privileged to serve San Diego clients. Anderson Plumbing, Heating and Air, helping homeowners maintain drain, heating and cooling systems since 1978. And by the Conrad Prebis Foundation, Darlene Marco Shiley, and by the following. by viewers like you. Thank you.